So here we are again with our cube pattern all drawn up and ready to go. And all we need to do now is cut this out in its entirety. And if we look close at this, we can see that we have an outline to cut all the way around. We have a few inside corners that need to be cut, which are going to be a little bit tricky. And we have a lot of outside and inside bevels to cut as well. So we have three basic types of cuts that we have to make. And we'll go through each one of those as we develop this cube into a final solid. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to actually cut the outside edge of the larger rectangle, the sort of bounding box that contains this entire pattern. And I'm going to use that as a way to demonstrate the proper technique for cutting a straight line with a straight edge guide, which again is our trusty ruler. So in this case, what I want to do is always have my ruler on the save side. What that means is that I don't want to have my ruler on the outside of the piece like this, because if I'm cutting and I move off my ruler, I've cut into the piece. If I have my ruler on the safe side and I accidentally move off my ruler as I'm cutting, which I shouldn't do anyway, but in case it happens, I have not cut into the piece and I can still salvage that edge. So I'm going to take my number two exact or my number eleven, I'm sorry, exacto blade uh, in my number one exacto holder, and it's nice and sharp. The tip isn't broken, uh, and I've only been using this blade for a short time. And what I'm going to do is line up my edge like so. right on my lines. I'm going to put nice firm pressure on my ruler. And because this is a long cut, I'm going to end up moving my hands a couple of times so that I so that I keep good firm pressure all the way along the ruler. So I have to be fairly careful that I don't move the ruler around as I do that. So I'm going to start on this corner right here and I'm going to just start cutting and I'm going to get all the way through the piece in one go. My wrist is nice and flat. My action is going to be coming from here in my elbow and from up here in my shoulder. And I'm going to very carefully push down with enough pressure to cut all the way through, and I'm going to pull the knife towards me. And I'm keeping pressure to the left. And as you can see, I'm sort of crawling my hand along the ruler so that I can move as I cut. And that should come away in one clean piece. Although it didn't. So I'm going to give it one more pass just to break away any weird spots that didn't go all the way through. Okay. And so you see there that I have a nice clean edge. The only reason that that edge is clean is because I was using proper angle on my X-Acto blade. So let me move my pattern out of the way for a second and try to demonstrate on camera here what the proper angle is. So in order to cut through foam core accurately and without creating a sort of popcorn effect, which I'll demonstrate here, you need to have a nice low angle on the piece. So if I have a high angle like I have right now, you can kind of hear and, and I can feel how I'm not cutting through cleanly. And you can see right here that that edge is dirty and it's full of voids and I've basically made popcorn out of that edge. To prevent that, I'm going to use a nice low angle, and in order to have that nice low angle, I'm going to have my wrist nice and flat. I'm going to have my, my knife pushed down like this, and I'm putting pressure on my index finger like this, and that's approximately the angle that I want. The, the absolute best angle that you can have is about 30 degrees, so if I pull out my trusty triangle here and I, and I give myself uh, a guide, I can see that I'm really close to 30 degrees, and I'm happy with that. So now if I take my straight edge and I, actually I'll just do this one freehand, and I push down at that angle, you'll see that I've got a nice clean cut again with no popcorn or anything like that. So that's the technique that we have to use everywhere that we cut on our pattern. So I'm going to move that scrap piece out of the way, bring my pattern back out here, and cut the next line. So to finish off this big bounding box, what I'm going to do is I'm going to lay my uh, ruler again on the save side, so it's going to be on top of my pattern, and I'm going to line it up with my line like this. And this one's a little shorter, and my hands are big, so I think I can probably do this without squeaking my hand along like I did last time. And I'm going to do exactly the same thing 
wrist is nice and flat, elbow is straight, um, or elbow is bent, but all the action is going to come from my elbow and from here. I'm not going to be moving my wrist, and I'm not going to be trying to, you know, do any twisting like this, because this is a straight line, and the best way to get a straight line is with a nice long lever. And if you've got arms, you have good levers. So here we go. And just to make sure that I'm through before I pull it away, one more pass. Okay. So now I have a nice straight line across the top. I've got a nice straight line uh, across the long side. And I have all my other marks that I need in order to make these cuts. So now what I need to do is cut out these inside corners. And still following the same rules that I had for having my ruler on the safe side. So in this case, what I'm going to do is place my ruler on the line, on the saved side, which means it's on top of the part that I want to keep. And I have to sort of carefully pierce into the foam core right here in the corner and push all the way down. And I'm not just pushing, though. I'm kind of pushing and pulling at the same time, and I'm doing it in little bites. And the reason for that is that I want to make sure that I'm pushing down and I'm getting all the way through to the opposite corner on the opposite side of the sheet. So now that I'm through, I'm just going to push my pressure down and I'm going to pull that knife towards me. And once more, just for good measure. Now this is kind of tricky in this corner because if I follow my previous rule and I put my knife on the safe side, I have to cut a really long way into this, or it feels like I have to cut a long way into the next part uh, in order to cut this clean. But the nice thing about this pattern is that because there's a beveled edge here, I don't have to worry about that, and I can just let that become the beginning of my score mark when I score this, this center line right here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to start off the edge of my sheet like this, and I'm going to drag my knife all the way through. And I'm not really worried too much about the fact that as I cut and as I finish this cut, I'm going to be cutting into this next piece because that's going to be scored anyway. So again, I can keep my ruler on the save side, and that's going to keep my, my piece safe from my knife uh, and any slips or mishaps that might happen. And I'm going to go once more just for good measure. Now these inside corners can be tricky because they may not let go all the way. And rather than pull that and tear that, I'm actually going to lift my sheet up here and I'm going to look at the other side and see what it looks like. And I can see that I have barely a hair hanging off there, so I'm just going to flip my sheet over like this and I'm just going to remove the remaining material. So now we just have to repeat that process in the next four inside corners, and we'll have our T fairly close to done. So now I have nice clean edges all the way around my sheet. I have uh, my T shape, this sort of uh, looks like a, like a Gothic cathedral layout here. And, um, and this is all ready to go to cut the final bevels. And these bevel cuts can be tricky, so I'm going to pause my camera here, and we're going to come back, and I'm going to reset so that you can see one of these bevel cuts up close and personal.